Okay, folks, you better buckle up. In today's video, we need to go through the top four stocks to buy now for crazy growth through April 2024. Now, each of the stocks in this lovely video will be presented with clear reasoning, decent entry price ideas and strategies, and a clear catalyst. And we'll get right to work in a second. But first, the only thing I ask in return for all of the work that goes into making a video like this is that you hit that ravishing like button and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, you need to make sure that you're doing your own frisk before taking any risk. Never buy, sell, or hold a stock based on our videos alone. You must be going off and doing your own due diligence. Okay, let's get to work. Timestamps down below. Okay, so I want to go ahead and start with the market context as of right now. We just wrapped up a hot Q1 in the stock market, and I want to go through some of the historical data on this. So the stock market hit 22 record highs in three months, and the S&P 500 rose about 10%. This makes the best first quarter since 2019. But of course, in terms of the life of this current trend, a lot of this run was driven by the MAG-7 stocks, and you're starting to see market breadth expand. Data provided to Market Watch by Carson Group's Ryan Detrick showed the number of S&P 500 stocks trading at 52-week highs recently peaked at 118, the highest in three years, and a clear sign that market breadth has continued to improve. Also, more index members are entering long-term uptrends as the percentage trading north of their 200-day moving average topped 83% on Thursday, the highest since August 2021, according to Dow Jones market data. So you are starting to see a spreading out of capital, which indicates a healthier momentum. But in order to explain why markets are rallying right now, what is fueling everything, you have to understand three core reasons. Number one, Fed cutting rates. So regardless of the higher for longer talk, it's expected that Papa Powell will inevitably start cutting rates sooner or later and thus causing money to pour into markets and pump consumer spending even more and pump markets even more. Number two, relative economic resiliency. You see, the economy has been surprisingly strong. A lot of that has to do with government spending, keeping things endlessly stimulated like an Adderall addict, but nonetheless, data looks pretty good right now and tends to be the case that during election years, you tend to see economies continue to pump. Number three, AI investment and expectations. This AI investment wave is exploding because many companies fear they will be left behind by their competitors, so they're spending big now, and that is pumping anything AI related. And with all of this present and with all the euphoria in the markets that we're seeing today, there's a lot of people wondering, before this next earnings season especially, should I be an optimistic Ali or should I be a paranoid Paulina? Maybe both. Rockety Ralph says markets will continue going up forever, but bearish Barry, I mean, he says get ready for collapse. Well, you got to remember, folks, that Rockety Ralph and bearish Barry like to always say the same thing, but it's not our job to use a magic eight ball. A trader's job is to ride trends. And then when the trend bends, we ride the new trend. If you look at most of the market history, markets have for the vast majority of time, 99% of the time been in a trend. It's a very, very, very small portion of the time where it's in a trend change. And when it's in a downtrend, you first get that 10% collapse, which means that a 10% stop loss is very, very, very effective if you're trying to manage your risk in a bull market. So a trader doesn't care about about being right. A trader cares about making money. A trader's job doesn't involve forecasting and then betting the house on a forecast. The trader's job means taking a position on the current trend and then having smart risk management for when that trend bends, right? Because our job is not to predict where markets are going to go today, tomorrow, or the next day. Our job is to ride whatever trend we're given. Okay, with all that being said, let's go ahead and start with our top four stocks. So let's start with the first one, SNDL. So SNDL, alongside other stocks in the Aunt Mary sector, are very hot right now. We'll call it Aunt Mary sector so we don't get smacked down by YouTube. But the reason it is rising right now is because Germany decriminalized Aunt Mary's fancy flowers. And in the coming days, you're going to see this catalyst run in SNDL and others sell off aggressively. And short sellers are going to rush to yell that Aunt Mary stocks are done and will be done forever. And while they're probably going to be right for a week or two, the overall excitement in the space is just getting started. We have a lot of catalysts for the sector. Firstly, we have Aunt Mary on the ballot in many different states for various uses, whether you're talking about Florida, Nebraska, Oregon, Idaho, Missouri, South Dakota, Arizona, Arkansas. Arkansas, Colorado, and Washington. Well, guess what? It's on the ballot this year. We know that poll data suggests that most Americans support legalizing it, and so the trend has been clearly in the direction of this industry expanding. There's also a recommendation from health regulators to reschedule Aunt Mary, and if the DEA decides to do that this year, that's going to be another huge boom. Why SNDL, though? Well, SNDL is a simple penny stock in the industry that we've talked about in years before, but it tends to have huge, huge price appreciation on positive developments in the space and can run multiples of its 
its competitors. I like them because I see them as having a very low dilution risk. Dilution tracker shows they have about 122 months of cash left based on their quarterly burn, and they don't have much in terms of historical dilution either. So it's arguably low risk from a dilution standpoint. My take, watch SNDL fall to $1.50 to $1.25 this week, and then watch for the head back upward for the next cycle high. In past years where we had big regulatory news coming, you'd see regular huge waves upward in SNDL related stocks, and thus that's why it's a key stock heading into and after April 2024. Number two, Robinhood, ticker symbol H-O-O-D. So in the last Top Stocks video from two weeks ago, we brought you Hood, and Hood has been continuing to uptrend, but there's a lot of reasons to continue to expect bullishness on this stock. And I mean, after all, folks, I mean, you've got a lot of room to grow to get back to even half of where it was trading during the last bull cycle. And here's a few reasons that you should keep in mind. A, product competitiveness. They have extremely attractive and unique products that just keep coming. For example, they just revealed their gold card, which gives people 3% cash back on everything, really, which is some of the best in the industry. And when people join to get that credit card, they are also more likely to bring more and more money to Robinhood and utilize their other higher revenue generating services. They also have early IPO investing, retirement matching, FDI insurance of up to 2.25 million utilizing partner banks and 24-hour trading of many hot tickers. A lot of these features, folks, bring and keep members and get them more and more woven into their ecosystem. Now, if you look at Robinhood's results, we are back in a bull market for retail trading, but I believe the best is ahead of us as retail trading is really just starting to pick up again. I mean, if you look at the February monthly metric report, they posted total assets under custody are up 59% year over year. Total trading volume for equities is up 41%. Options is up 33%. Crypto up 86%. In terms of customer margin and cash sweep balances, total cash sweep is up 126%. And again, from a retail trading perspective, volume is really just starting to pick up and all the new customers that Robinhood is bringing in with its products like credit cards and high yield savings accounts should all funnel largely into their trading products as well, at least a solid portion of them. On May 8th, 2024, Robinhood is expected to announce Q1's numbers and based on the metrics we've seen, Q1 numbers should be pretty impressive. In my view, Hood offers a ton more in its value proposition today than it did in the 2021 era runs when it first came out onto the market, yet the price is trading at a paltry fraction of where it was originally at. And it's not like they've increased the share count by much. I mean, in 2021, they had some 0.85 billion shares outstanding. Now they have 0.86 billion shares outstanding. So this is almost an apples to apples comparison. And so if you continue to see crypto and equity trading booming, which arguably is what we are setting up for, then Hood should continue seeing a speedy recovery. Okay, number three, Taiwan Semiconductor manufacturing company, ticker symbol TSM. This company is frequently abbreviated to TSMC, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So TSMC is arguably one of the least understood, but at the same time, most important companies in the world right now. When you hear about all these big companies like NVIDIA and AMD and Apple coming out with hot new chips, who do you think actually manufactures a lot of them? TSMC. For example, if you buy a new Apple computer today, you'll likely be buying one with their M chips in it. And who makes that M chip? Well, the main manufacturer, TSMC. TSMC's business model centers on being a pure play manufacturer, meaning it manufactures semiconductor chips for customers without designing its own chips. This model allows companies like Apple and AMD and NVIDIA to focus on chip design while leveraging TSMC's advanced manufacturing capabilities. TSMC invests heavily in research and development to maintain cutting edge processes, enabling the production of more efficient and more powerful chips for a wide array of applications from consumer electronics to high performance computing. And TSMC folks enjoys a 28% market share. So anyways, here you have this company that is literally doing all the heavy lifting behind the surface to service all of this AI demand and chip demand, and it's been selling off from highs. My take, watch for a rebound. We are still in a momentum cycle for chips and AI in general, and so a dip to previous resistance at 135 and even the 120s should be looked at as a dip buying opportunity for the next wave upward. Number four, Mara Lovely Mara. So Marathon Digital Holdings, this is a top Bitcoin miner, and we have Bitcoin halving this month on April 20th. Bitcoin has historically tended to go up before and after halving, and that can motivate more to the upside by quite a lot. And we've been saying that since December for Mara, and she's gone through multiple cycles of breakouts and then huge dip cycles. But the way to play her, I'd argue, is by scouting out entries after big dips, not immediately buying her after higher highs, as most markets like to do. She has some of the most impressive infrastructure in the crypto mining space, an extremely impressive hash rate, and arguably one of the best long-term track records when you're talking about the actual underlying business. Obviously, the stock reacts only to the price of Bitcoin and the imminent fluctuations, but, but, but the overall business has been managed incredibly well when you look at how they retain Bitcoin on their balance sheet and then sell them during certain market conditions and buy more during certain market conditions, so on and so forth. Now, risks. Now, in terms of risks and really derailing risks, the biggest one is that D word dilution. You know, for example, I mean, I gave my analysis on competitor CleanSpark CLSK last week, arguing that 
it had more cycle highs to reach prior to and in the aftermath of Bitcoin having. And then on Thursday, right before Easter Sunday, the three-day weekend, you got this massive offering news and the stock got completely obliterated. Now, it's pretty untraditional and unusual that you see an offering in a lower volume week right before a three-day holiday weekend. But nonetheless, here we are. The threat of an offering at any point is something that you just have to stomach when it comes down to these types of stock. If you want to mess with them, if you want to play them, well, you got to be aware that they're pining for an offering. And Mara has the ability to dump shares whenever she wants to as well. Just look at their recent SEC filing. So how do you mitigate against that risk? Well, you can't completely mitigate against the risk, but you can certainly utilize a stop loss 5, 10% down. I saw a comment from someone the other day that said, quote, if Charlie really cares about his audience, he would give us ideas that are sure to run hundreds of percentage points, but also have zero risk. Well, folks, the issue is that's impossible to do. The only way to get gains in the market is to be taking on strategic and smart risk. If you want to target high growth stocks, you got to be dealing with their massive risk to the downside. Now, if you're playing them right and you get them at good prices and you have stop losses for when you're wrong, you should be able to force yourself to come out ahead in the long run. Anyways, that caps off today's video. What are your favorite ideas for April 2024? Let us know down below. We'll see you in the next video, folks.